about this because let's face the facts i think i need to do that since the very beginning i'm only doing this right now too because i got contacted by a family member they apparently have been seeing a lot of the sensationalism spreading around and they were worried about what was going on i had talked with them at least we went over things and they have a better understanding of what actually you know has been going on they thought a lot of this was recent too because a lot of the posts about this stuff are also kind of treating it like it is a recent thing when no it's that with Dream Daddy, it was a continuous lie that was ongoing, sure. There was a big thing kind of happening about, you know, who actually showed us what was actually happening there, because for the longest time the narrative kind of was like, okay, I guess these two guys were just really erratic and they decided to just want to say uh, stuff about this and, like, ruin their lives needlessly and throw themselves under, but no, it's because behind the scenes we were having people continuously bring it up to us. I wouldn't have cared about it at all if it weren't for the fact that I was seeing it hurting people, and on Julian's end, it was making Julian cry. We would get home and he would be miserable just knowing that everybody at this office is just not able to say anything or do anything here. So it's why it started becoming a discussion of actually doing something rather than just sitting by and complaining, actually getting something done. We talked to a bunch of people and one employee specifically even showed us a gigantic email of all these things they wanted to bring up. We got told later he didn't even send it. Maybe he did, but I got told he didn't send it. I would have believed it because, yeah, we got turned around on by like everybody. Before I even spoke up about all of it, Julian said to me, well, this will at least be a test of who your actual friends are, and it was. Uh, literally everyone abandoned us for at least a couple of days, but after a few more days passed, some people came back, and after a few months passed, more people came back and were willing to even apologize behind the scenes in some cases. Nobody wanted to acknowledge like publicly what really had happened there. But that's why we also got to be in a position then of just ever since that point, people always looking at this the wrong way, people always changing the story up about what had happened here. And behind the scenes, I even got to then start hearing from other artists that people involved within this were going around and trying to tell the story preemptively like they could control the narrative themselves and try to say that other people did something bad. So this story has been muddied like back and forth, and that's all it ever was. It was as straightforward as we were working at the office, people were getting frustrated by this game because they felt it was performative, they felt like there wasn't a lot of effort actually legitimately going into it, they felt like it was just supposed to be, you know, kind of a tool for PR because they were paying a lot of money on PR at the time. Uh, there was a lot of complaints about how things were being divided out in the office, all the stuff, all these different complaints, and the funny thing is, looking back on all of it, I don't even take most of it as legitimate now. I just take it as a thing that people were just kind of complaining for the sake of complaining. Because when it was this immediate thing of everyone cutting off and going, actually, I don't want to say anything, and I don't want anyone to know that I was a part of this, it comes off like, yeah, it really didn't mean anything. People were frustrated, they didn't like working at their job, and they were just complaining about things, and when it finally got that real and went that far, they backed off. So, was it a betrayal? Yeah. Did it suck? Yeah. Did it continuously get us hurt? Yeah, it did, because people kept skewing the story with it too. People went all these different directions. People thought that because I spoke up about Dream Daddy with Julian that we ruined friendships when actually no, it didn't impact anyone's relations at all. I know other people maybe got into fights later, but that had nothing to do with it. Dream Daddy really wasn't the big deal people thought it was. It's been a misconception this entire time. And while it was a betrayal, not the kind that people really thought it was. Did it lead to a lot of bad stuff? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I tried to kill myself the day after. Julian had to stop me, and I'm glad he did. Julian was the wake-up call. Julian was the first example ever of somebody who I actually felt like cared. He listened. He was there. He didn't want to see me hurting myself. It was hurting him. And that's why I'm happy to be here with him, and I want to keep doing things. I want to keep making things and doing things, obviously. And this has always been such a point of, like, stress because... Once you get near people like this, when people are really digging and hoping for anything they can find to weaponize and like use against these creators, well, this is what ends up happening. This is where you get. You have people just sort of following you, hoping to push you into those directions. Our friends started treating us differently in real life. Julian had people reaching out to him for the first time ever for like five to six years, and as soon as they arrive, they come to visit, they start asking us for dirt on YouTubers. I had the same thing. We have it happen, like, all over the place. People really altered their behavior around us when we were taking this as a job, and I was looking at it as a job. I was looking at it as a job that I was helping a friend out with. I wasn't looking at it as a thing of, I want to grow a brand necessarily off of this. It's why I was even trying not to mention, like, Wan Wan Games stuff or anything about Bippy when we were doing videos. 
I was kind of hoping that maybe that could still have its own identity and not get linked into all of this. Not have to be a thing that when that game comes out then, I'm going to have people asking me about Dream Daddy again. That's seriously where we're kind of at with this stuff. It's going to be an infinite cycle of this, and it's why I do really have to sever it, because it's not healthy psychologically whatsoever for people to try to just embed this into you and force it into you. And specifically what they're forcing into you is the fact that they don't know what's going on, and they're just trying to get you to go with that. It's been frustrating, it's been stressful, and people know that they're pushing, like, way too hard with it. They've been seeing how hard they've gone. They know that it's been hurting us sometimes, too, but there's always going to be jerks. There's always going to be assholes, obviously. That's why I know some people even feel like, oh, yeah, you know, what would you expect? It's, it's the internet. Well, no, I, I expected it. I know that. But that doesn't mean I'm going to justify it. That's an excuse. You're saying everybody else acts shitty, so... Yeah, I'll be shitty too. Okay, you can be shitty, but I'll call you out for being shitty. I don't care if everybody else is doing it. I don't know why that is one that everybody goes to so often as, like, their justification that you go, well, everyone else is doing it. Why is that a thing? Internet etiquette isn't even etiquette. It's the opposite. One of the rules online is that you're just not supposed to be even direct about things. A rule online would be, if you reply to somebody, that means you lose, even though it's like, why? Why does that just make you lose? If you confront somebody or you're like direct about something, that just means you automatically lose? It's always frustrated with, like, always frustrated me. It's why I was always being told by people too, like, this is why you gotta lie to people. This is why you just don't be honest with audiences because they can't handle it. And by the way, I have been told that numerous times. Because a lot of creators fear their audiences. They know they could be lashed out at at any moment. They know that if something is perceived as betrayal, these guys are all going to jump on them. And it's why we had so much pressure on us, even back at the time, not to say anything. Because if we say anything, this is just going to get worse and worse and worse. And it's going to keep, you know, growing and growing and growing. Festering, becoming a problem. Because people are going to continuously look at it and see it as a spectacle. Come in, monetize it, try to take advantage of it. A lot of YouTubers are basically TMZ at this point. They know that they're just acting like paparazzi. They don't care. They want their money. And that's why it's been handled very disrespectfully here these past few weeks. Uh, I think the most baffling one to me was that I made a post where I made a joke about the clickbait thumbnails, and somebody actually went and made their clickbait thumbnail like even more clickbaity. They're that lacking in self-awareness. I just assume they know they're being a shit, is what I would say. Uh, they kind of came off like it already. I know with some of these people obviously re-uploading it, they are just being turds, and they do just want to, con you know, continuously perpetuate conflict. But, yeah, that's what's kind of irritating with all of this. Uh, having people initially pretend that they're seeking out justice for you, except you're telling them, hey, you have 20 minutes out of 15 hours. How are you fighting for justice if you don't even have accurate information right now? Because I can tell you right now, your video here is not accurate. You're leaving out a lot and trying to really target specific people while you've left out further details about them that kind of undo a bit of this narrative you're trying to perpetuate. It's been really annoying seeing people do that because, like I said, 2017, we dealt with that. That was the same thing. We're watching it play out again. This stuff doesn't help anything. This stuff just makes things worse and it muddies things and creates more stress. I know a lot of creators probably would have an easier time making stuff if there wasn't this connection to the audience like that. It can be positive in some cases. It's not like the audience has to be negative. Absolutely not. I've seen a lot of positive audiences, even on YouTube. When I, when I think of, like, I don't know, more positive end content where it's just people talking about, like, technology or it's just people, like, sharing a hobby, you'll see positivity there. But these Let's Play communities, it seems like there are just a lot of people really starved. The majority of people that we knew who would reach out to us were usually doing so just because we had a connection to this stuff. I remember even getting to hear from a friend at one point that they were being told that they were gonna be in this content simply because they knew me. That people were treating it that way. I had people reaching out to me that I had no clue about because they were hoping this was a ladder climb. Then I got to be treated like ass afterwards because they realized they weren't going to get anything out of me. I really, really would be fine with just like living in a cave and just making video games and just silently doing that. 
not even putting a name on there, just putting them out there. I don't care how many people play them. I just want to make stuff. I just want my life back. All I ever wanted to do was just make stuff here. And it's what I'd like to return to. It's what I'm going to be doing this year. And I don't care if people are going to be uploading more and more videos here to try to, like, you know, force me back into this. That's like, no, 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 no. Go back, go back. Go back to 2017. Game Grumps. I don't care. I don't care about any of this YouTube stuff anymore. I don't care about Let's Plays. I don't care about whatever is the current thing to follow an algorithm. I want to just move forward. And I'm going to move forward. Even if people don't want me to move forward. I'm going to move forward here. Uh, did shitty things happen? Absolutely. We've also talked about them for years. There's a reason why it came up recently and why people had to flare it up into a drama. It's not a surprise. Hell, there were even some recent examples of people wanting to do this with Game Grumps the past few years where they actually didn't have their information correct. They were pushing for a narrative, but they didn't have accurate information to work with. They were even trying to weaponize individuals who came out and said, Hey, don't speak for me. And they were also doing that with what just happened here. There is a very active effort to try to just make everything around these guys hellish. And it's part of the reason why we still have to hear about it too, even if we try to make as much distance as possible. Anytime we try to make distance, that's what people then go and do and act like, Ooh, well that's suspicious. They're getting annoyed by this? Hmm. That's not suspicious. I think that's really obvious. Yeah, we are. <laughs> It's annoying to have to hear about one of the worst moments in your life and have people pretend they care about it when they're just hungry to see people get hurt. That's why, once again, it's kind of weird for you to do a stream where you're talking about suicide and then someone is going to upload that. I know a lot of people probably would have liked some kind of idealized timeline that this would have all just worked out, everybody would have been good friends, but we also weren't in there very long. We really weren't. And... With a lot of this stuff, we weren't that heavily connected anyways. I know people felt like we were or wanted us to be, but it's why we were making so much distance and we're trying for that too. We got hurt by it. We kind of learned our lesson through that and we wanted to be done. And there was even some effort happening from a lot of other ends to keep us in there even when we expressed already we want to leave. But that's why really here, I gotta express it over and over. I want to be done. I don't care about like... Don't tell me you're seeking justice if I'm also telling you that you're going after the wrong people. That's not justice. If you're targeting the wrong people and you know you are, that's not justice. Don't tell me you're helping me if you're going to monetize what happened and you're going to misconstrue it and target all the people I said at the end of my stream not to target. If you're doing all this stuff, you're clearly not doing it to help. And... I mean, I'm not going to hold back on saying it. You're scum. You're absolute scum if you're doing that. Uh, you, you can do your, like, maybe have, like, a, a drawing of a character with his arms folded next to this to, like, prove how you're not. But, no, seriously, you are. You're exploiting probably one of the most vulnerable situations that somebody has here because you're mad about a guy who fucking plays video games. That's where you're at. That's what you're operating on. Guys, leave this alone. <laughs> if you seriously wanted to help with any of this in the past, you would have. And if you seriously cared about any of this in the past, people would have listened back then. It's only being heard right now because it got sensationalized. And it got sensationalized and got people listening because you guys thought Game Grumps did something really heinous recently here. Game Grumps had to be in the front of it for people to notice it. If people are also thinking this is some kind of thing of like, oh, you were trying to get a bunch of attention towards yourself now that you're about to go, like do something big. No. All I'm doing is hurting myself, actually, by stepping away from all of this. I'm cutting off one of my major sources of income because I need to actually improve my life finally. I can't do this anymore. I can't be swirled around by like 17 to 19 year olds obsessing about video game related drama. When the stuff behind the scenes wasn't jokey, haha, Mario farts. This was, somebody is actively pursuing everything you are doing following you and trying to push you over the edge until you get to the point that you just kill yourself. And then they're hoping to exploit that, that I could help them out. It's things like that. 
These things were not minor. These things were not gentle. These things never were. They were very intense. It was crazy to me how far people could go sometimes. And some of the stuff... Sure, some of it can be ongoing. A lot of it, not necessarily. Is it going to be an infinite thing for people, though? Absolutely. I still have people bring up things from, like, 2016 asking me, like, Oh, yeah, you know, I watched a video yesterday, so that means that that video happened yesterday, right? People even seem to have, like, a weird sense of what a timeline is here because uh, they're basing it on just the content they watch and when they watch it. That's why I'm not going to be surprised. I'm going to infinitely hear stuff like that. Dream Daddy will come up time and time and time again because... No matter what, someone will eventually slip back into that content and then feel like it's more recent than it actually is. It's why we infinitely hear about it. It's why people infinitely pull for it. And it's why people also then infinitely have their, their backup response afterwards of going, well, I mean, like, you bring it up all the time when it's like, no, you do. Constantly. And then when I finally call out the fact you're doing that, you try to throw it back at me for it. Kind of similar for... Hey, I was trying to help you, and now you're a jerk because you told me I'm not helping. Yeah, that doesn't really work. I know you're trying to make that work as an angle, but it really doesn't. You are trying to monetize a video where someone was seriously covering like the most traumatic incidents in their life, and now you're shouting at them and treating them like a villain because they pointed out how you're trying to monetize their tragedy and then like exploit it for drama? to gleefully try to attack YouTubers you don't like. This whole thing has been really absurd. Like, I already thought we hit peak absurdity, and it's just been getting even more absurd. I am sorry to a lot of people who probably did want me to also maybe keep up with stuff, but I have been wanting to just work on game stuff. I really have, just this entire time, been wanting to do this stuff. And I know to people then, it's like, well, why don't you? But... This is where our income was coming from. Our Patreon, we would have people back out if we weren't streaming or doing videos sometimes. I've gotten messages from people that I have to go back to YouTube or they're going to back out. And I even told people over and over, don't support this if you're just coming for YouTube stuff. That would be a major mistake. Only support it if you care. But that's what ended up happening. We had a lot of people coming through who were there just because YouTube, even if we said stuff like this. Just because you make a statement doesn't mean people are going to hear it. In fact, you can kind of accept that the majority of people just won't. They're not going to hear it. <sighs> it sucks, and it's going to be a long road for me, too. I don't know how I'm ever going to fully, you know, develop trust for people again after so much of this. A lot of you guys who've actually been supportive, obviously... I appreciate everything that you guys have done. You've helped us through so many nightmares, situations, things that nobody should really even have to go through here. You guys allowed us to survive. You really did, and I'm not even exaggerating when I say that. You allowed us to survive. If the few people who were being supportive were not there, I don't think we would have. You guys really did help us out. There was a lot really stacked against this. This was a very, like, uphill battle. And it's always going to be, obviously, but you guys really helped us out. I don't know what I'm going to do regarding some of the situations of, like, yeah, I did get blacklisted in some cases because of the Dream Daddy thing, even though, well, the truth is at least out there now, right? At least we know everything around that, but the damage was still done, and it was some pretty serious damage. Relationships to family members... A lot of that got impacted by this too, and some of it can't really be undone. Damage was done, but at the same time, I also saw that people were trying to fight for like, well, you should be repaid in these kinds of ways, or this should happen. I don't even know the full extent of why some of these things happened. I did talk about that on the previous stream. I know the things that happened in some cases, but even I don't really understand why they did. And in some cases, I don't even fully know who was responsible for it either. I know that it's between, like, different sides in some cases what happened. I don't know, like, who's telling the truth and who isn't. I've been yanked around like crazy. I mean, back at the time, it's why when I finally found out what, like, gaslighting meant, I, I felt stupid because I heard everyone using it, like, just jokingly. But that's what I had to realize was like, oh my god, is that what gaslighting means? Oh, shoot. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Because, yeah, even that was happening. 
The day after I spoke up about Dream Daddy, I got told that we didn't go to the ramen shop to talk about things, and I'm looking directly at my phone and see the text messages right there from when we were there, and yet I'm being told in person it didn't happen. I had stuff like that happen all the time, constantly. And then here's an audience that also doesn't know what's happening, so they go and tell you things that aren't happening too, and treating it like you need to also adhere to that. Being surrounded by people telling you you need to accept misinformation, you need to accept things that are not true, just to allow this all to function. At least through a lot of this, some lessons had been learned. I don't want to go back to a lot of this, I don't want to do industry work, I don't want to be around types of people like this where everything is about the hustle, it's about a ladder climb. I'd be fine to just be, I don't know, completely alone just making things and just putting them out there and just leaving it at that. I don't need people to know who even made it. I don't need recognition. I just want to be able to just make stuff and do stuff and that's all I really want to do. That's all I ever wanted to do. It's been tough. It's been a long road. Then even physical stuff, stuff being kind of reminders of that too. I skipped a surgery just so we could move. People were mad that we were going to quit doing videos, so people were calling us crooks and thieves for trying to move when the whole point was we couldn't afford living in L.A. And I had to skip a surgery. I broke a bone completely in half. I snapped it back into place on my own. I didn't even want to go to the hospital, but we did. Thankfully, they goofed up. We didn't have to pay a lot for, like, the splint they put on it. But I was supposed to go back. I was supposed to also get surgery. I never did. I can't move this toe anymore now. It's swollen. I can kind of feel that the bone is really weird inside how it healed. But yeah, it's just been that way ever since like 2018. It was the only way we could really move. Uh, I've done a lot here just to try to ensure we can keep stuff going forward. It's why sometimes I'll take side jobs if I have to. Julian will too. We've been trying really hard to just keep things moving forward, even with all the hits we're constantly taking just for the mistakes made in the past. But that's why, like I said, I need to seriously move forward. I need to legitimately move forward. It's why I said specifically I want to move on and that I don't need quote-unquote justice, because once again, if this is coming from heavily condensed videos trying to recontextualize what happened while also monetizing and using a clickbait thumbnail... That's not being done to help, and that's not justice. You're not seeking out the truth. You're just going and lashing out at somebody that you want to hurt. Justice has nothing to do with this. You don't even have an accurate story, and you know you don't, and you're rolling with it anyways. But this isn't everybody, thankfully. A lot of you guys have actually been very supportive. And a lot of you have been allowing us to even have that room that we've needed to finally just start moving forward. I would like to. I've always been in a position where I've wanted to. And if people ever wondered, why is he always being so weird? Why does he keep, like, disappearing for a while? Why does he keep wanting this distance so badly? This is why. I don't want to think about this for the rest of my life. I know that a lot of communities online love to just endlessly obsess about something for, like, decades, but I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of this. I never was even deeply associated with a lot of this anyways. People were looking at me like I was Newgrounds when it's like, I'm not from Newgrounds. People were looking at me like, oh, it's a core member of Game Grumps when it's like, I'm not from Game Grumps really. We were doing some stuff there temporarily. Even with Oni Plays, it's like, that's not my channel. I was on there, but that's not my channel. I am a person. I know people see a cartoon alien, obviously, but there is a human being here, and I guess that's what I'd say is if you guys are going to go pursue the cartoon, fine, go pursue the cartoon, but let the human being now step away. I want to go back to just making things and doing stuff that would at least be, like, happy, positive for my end. People always bring up how I always sound so depressed, and this is partially why I haven't been getting opportunities to do the things that I, I would like to do. It's been just such an endless struggle to be able to stay afloat and get anything working. I'm sorry again, like I said to everyone, if this is disappointing, but 
it is what it is. Reality is what it is. And for people, once again, who have been around these streams, they've been there since the beginning listening to these, I think you guys know too, this story has been continuing for a long time. We didn't have a shift on details or anything, as much as people were like hungry for that too. It's been a long, consistent story that Julian and I have been telling because even if audience had their moments of going, no, that can't be true, or trying to shut it down, that's why we stayed firm. It did. It did. It sucked, but it happened. But it happened. Past tense. Happened. It shouldn't continue happening. Once again, if you guys really want to help us out here, just allow us to move forward. It's all we've ever wanted. We've just wanted to work on our own projects and do our stuff. I never thought it was going to get this chaotic. I never thought it was going to get this complex. And I didn't think that behind the scenes there was going to be this much like venom. The one moment that still sticks with me was seriously having... It didn't even happen once. I've had a few people suggesting the idea of self-harm with like an angle to it. Knowing that I had people around me that legitimately wanted to see me dead had me pretty scared. And I know that was a point of confusion for people as well. Why did you name a couple of people, but then you didn't name anybody else? It's because, like I said in the previous stream, the whole point of this is not go lash out at everyone, go hurt people. The whole point of this was to say, hey, I'm going to be done with things. This is the stuff that was sort of going on. If people want to hear this or not, whatever, but here it is. We've talked about these things before, obviously. I'm not naming names here because I don't want you guys doing your super sleuthing where you go for all the wrong people and hurt all the wrong people again and just perpetuate something that doesn't at all match up with reality. I would much rather have it that I can at least just say experiences I had, leave it at that, and move on. Especially because in a lot of those situations, there's no way to really make them right or correct them or fix them or repair them. They happened. That's kind of it. And some of those situations, too... It's kind of a confession if they were to come out and say something, which is why I decided not to say names. Leave it at that, because then everyone could potentially just move forward. Oh, does that mean there's no justice? Sure, but once again, there hasn't been justice here this month anyways. I already told you guys that you're pushing for the wrong angle with this. There was a lot that happened to us, and it happened to us all over the place. Happened related to some of the stuff that we were doing. Happened in relation to family. Happened in relation to friends. Happened all over the place. We had a few friends through all of this, at least, thankfully. And some people did learn. Some people did start to grow. It's why I brought up that, yeah, Matt did a lot of what he did. But in his own way that I can't personally relate to, at least, I could tell he was trying to still be a friend. I know he was still trying to reach out. It seemed like he felt guilty about what happened and he wanted to make right. He didn't want to say what he did publicly because he didn't want to threaten his own career. But at the same time, too, I kind of get it because even if Matt did own up to it at the time, I bet you guys wouldn't have ever let it go. I bet you would have been just lashing out endlessly over that. I get the fear to some extent. Did it screw us over royally? Sure. It's why I also emotionally am probably not going to ever be able to get past that one. Because it was also being buried in a way that could keep getting us hurt, since the truth was never out there. It sucks because it's a lose-lose. The truth being out there means that people are going to dwell on it and just continuously do harm and never let people who even got like hurt through it be able to psychologically move on. But then on the opposite end, if you don't say anything, then people are just going to theorycraft, speculate because clearly something had happened, and then the story gets muddy, and then potentially the people who are already getting hurt get to be hurt even further because people went with the story thinking that they did more than they actually had done. And in some of the situations that we were faced with, people were deliberately trying to kind of like steer the narrative a bit. There was some of that happening. People were racing out to try to control the story. That's why I was shocked when I was hearing from artists that they got reached out to about Julian and I when it's like, what the... I'm also sorry if I made anybody scared or nervous during that stream at the time because i remember when the suicide subject came up in specific it was getting a lot of people like nervous because 
kind of for the first time ever on stream, people actually got to hear what I sounded like when something was making me upset. I think for years my tone, because of how dry it is, it always read that way, but that was a legitimate moment of really just breaking down. I think that's why it's also some people probably see that as like instability. Oh, well, why is he sounding this way during the stream? Uh, because these are really sensitive subjects, and I think it's normal for a person to feel emotional. I would be more concerned if somebody wasn't feeling anything in relation to these. But a lot happened over the holiday season. We didn't have a very good Christmas, obviously, and neither did we have a good New Year's. I'm no longer talking to my mom. She took pleasure in a lot of the abuse she did to me when I was younger, so I finally just told her off. I, I, I just had my grandma die. I, I'm just, I'm exhausted. I am really exhausted. <laughs> I'm even kind of at a loss of words at this point, just because my brain feels like just mush after so much of this. I do also want to apologize to anyone who did re-upload feeling like maybe they were helping, just very innocently, because I saw a few uploads that did come off that way. There were a lot where people were sensationalizing it or trying to take advantage of it, but there were a few where people weren't. They were being respectful about it. In some cases, people even took them down. You guys were cool for that. I do appreciate it, because they seem to understand. Yeah. When you're clipping down a really long stream into no length at all, and you're only focusing on specific people who got brought up, yeah, it makes it seem really different. You're recontextualizing it. It's not doing help. It's gonna do harm. People are gonna go use that as ammunition. That's gonna serve as a weapon for people. And it's not accurate. I'm, th I'm thankful that some people at least did understand. There were gonna be bad eggs, obviously. And that's why I do need to at least call that out. I'm not going to play dumb about it, nor do I want you guys thinking that is helping us. It's absolutely not, in any way at all. But it's not surprising, obviously. A lot of this isn't surprising. A lot of the things that played out really weren't that surprising, I guess. But once again, yeah, this has needed to happen for a long time. My therapist even said last year, it's the best thing to do here is to finally just sever this. It's only been doing harm at this point. It's only been doing a lot of damage. I, I need to finally get my life back here, take some control, and start doing the things I really do need to be doing for myself. Uh, I'm still going to be making stuff. If people are worried about any of that, don't worry. I, I will still be making stuff. It's just... If I'm going to be doing Bippy stuff, you guys will hear about it on Patreon, and we'll post about it on the Wanwan account. If I do anything else, well, I'm not going to say uh, if it's me. I probably will be working on other things here and there, but I'm not going to make any mention of any of it. That's what I used to do in the past, and I kind of prefer it that way. I had a theory when I had just come out of high school that after watching so much around, like, how people were already sensationalizing things on like television tabloids and everything around celebrity life not to mention stuff like how you could see maybe a hideo kojima production and how that could be treated by people i started thinking to myself about you know if i'd never put a name on the projects i do if i didn't have a face to go with the work that i did at least the work then could just stand on its own it wouldn't have to be a thing of someone going, oh, this sucks because this guy made it, or, oh, I love this because this guy made it. It could just be, oh, I liked this about this game, I didn't like this. And you go, cool, that's just criticism. That's just pure, unfiltered criticism because it doesn't have to have any angle or bias towards it. They're just taking in the game and they're just telling you what they thought of it. I figured that was the best way to go. And through all of this, I think I had my theory, like, cemented here. Attaching a face is going to distract a lot of people. It's probably going to be detrimental in a lot of ways, obviously, not to attach that, but those aren't areas I necessarily care about. I just care about being given the opportunity that I can just work on stuff, make stuff, put stuff out there, and just feel good that I'm getting to make things and do things, being allowed to do that. 
And that's why this has been rough, because we usually weren't being allowed to do that. We got yanked around. People didn't want us going back to these things. People didn't like the idea that we wanted to stop doing videos. People thought we were being stubborn, we were being belligerent. Why can't you just be friends with all these personalities that I like online? But that's why I hope you guys at least have a little more of an understanding here. There was a lot that happened. We got hurt a lot. And for people within this, at least I think for them it makes some sense. I'm also just not the right person for this kind of thing. I'm not good at lying. I'm not good at trying to be, like, performative. I'm not good at, like, I don't know, even getting behind, like, big business and stuff either. I'm not good with sponsorships, any of that. I'm not good about any of that. It's stuff that I, I'm not even really a big fan of in some cases. But what I did always, you know, like to do was just make stuff. I liked to program. I liked doing, like, pixel art. I, I liked just getting to do creative projects. And Julian, it's the same thing. In fact, part of the reason why we even got together was because Julian was excited about not only are we here for each other, we get to make things together. Both of us, that was sort of what we wanted to do. It was our passion was to be able to make things. And I really hope this year gets to be something good for us on that. Uh, now, I have this up as a VOD here on Twitch. You guys can watch this as many times as you want. Uh, it's right here on Twitch for you guys to watch. Uh... If you're going to be seeing this re-uploaded and it's trimmed down again, once again, is it even a surprise? Uh, it's going to probably get recontextualized. In fact, the angle I'm expecting this time, because I'm bringing up some people doing this stuff, how people were trying to exploit this a bit, I'm expecting that those people are then going to respond very negatively to this and try to make this into like a controversy or a drama because I'm not in favor of really like shameless clickbaiting and trying to exploit tragedy for monetization. I don't really like that. Uh, that's the angle I would kind of expect here. What I would hope for is maybe this could finally just be understanding of, okay, he really means it with that. He does need to make distance. He does need to get away here. I know it's a tall order, and obviously as I'm saying this, I do expect too that no, there's going to be crappy people. There always will be. There will always be that. You can't stop it. But it's why I would at least like that hopefully the majority can understand here what we've needed, where we're trying to go, and where we'd like to now be. What happened happened. It did all suck. But a lot of this stuff was in the past, and a lot of this stuff, too, we have talked about for years. It is really, really, really suspicious that only now are people really going hard about this because there was a Rant Grumps post on New Year's. And even with that post, I saw some good people in there. While Rant Grumps is a community, I never really understood it, and I only knew about it because people at the office kept bringing it up all the time because they were fearful about it, and they knew that people were spreading misinformation there. Uh, it does seem like some people there are genuinely just trying to form an understanding. Yes, I would say a gigantic portion of that audience is only looking for trouble and they just want ammunition. But some people there were understanding about this. When that initial post went up, pretty quickly people were pointing out that the summary that was in the original post wasn't accurate whatsoever to what got said in the stream. I'm sorry again for how much of a messy scenario this is. I know I've said it already, but I'll say it again. This all should have been so simple and straightforward. None of this should have ever been as complex as this. Things shouldn't have had to go this way. But, like I said earlier, in terms of seeking out justice, that ship has sailed long ago. If people were hoping for justice, you've missed that for about a few years now. The damage was done, and it's been done over and over and over again. And it's why, like I said, the realistic way of trying to help us out here would be letting us move forward. We don't need you guys to go jumping around and attacking the wrong people. We don't even want you to go out attacking anyways. It's not a good response to any of this, and that's why some of these situations got people so panicked and then hurting their friends because they're living in fear about what could happen to them through this audience. And it's not everybody, obviously. I will say that again. When I refer to the audience scaring people like this, it's not like it's fully justified in some cases. 
It's kind of an immature response. You should be able to have a conversation with your audience. But there are definitely some very, very, very unhinged audience members that just go completely out of the way to be uncomfortable here. So I'll also say too, if anyone is ever trying to bring up YouTube stuff to me outside of YouTube, if you're trying to bring up Twitch stuff to me outside of Twitch and everything, I'm making a request right here now too. Please cut that off. It's why I don't usually respond when you do that. It's why friends in real life, if you were hoping, like, to talk to people through this, because I had a lot of people contact me hoping, like, oh, can you put me in contact with these guys? That's why I wasn't responding. These things have been very serious. They've been ongoing. They've been emotional. And I don't really want to continue living this and hearing about this and being stuck within this. I do want to finally break free of this and just get back to where I need to really be and have my life again. And like I said, I'm even putting ourselves a little bit at risk here. I'm going to stop streaming and everything this year. I'm not going to be doing any of the stuff where we were using these, you know, as a source of income. I'm fine to make that risk because I know I need to do this. It sucks. It really sucks. This whole situation really sucks and it always sucked. And even with the few friends I had around that were being supportive through all of this, nobody really knew what to do. It was always a conversation of, it doesn't seem like there's any real solution or answer. Going away was really one of the only answers. And anytime I'm going to go away, well, you saw what happened on New Year's. You saw what just happened pretty recently, too. If I'm not here, you can expect that someone's also going to try to once again kick this up. But that's why, at least anyone who's watching this right now, you have some of the context here for you. So if you start seeing this stuff happen again, you know, here's your context, here's your information. If you see something that seems like, yeah, it's trying to get this all going again, it's trying to be a problem again, feel free to report it or say something. I don't think there's any harm in calling that kind of thing out. That people are deliberately, like, trying to get misinformation going again just for the sake of another conflict. The truest way of handling this right now would be just letting us move on. Yes, the stuff happened, and that's why I get that, that can be tough for people. That's like, but that changed my perspective about a bunch of things. Well, okay, but also accept that a lot of these things were said for a long time now. And it's because a lot of this isn't recent. Some of this stuff is still ongoing, some of this stuff is recent, but the majority of it happened way back in the past and it was people just still continuously refusing to let it go. We still got to be brought up over and over again as like a tool or a weapon for people to try to lash out at someone when they didn't even know what happened. I don't want to be that. I'm not your battle axe. I'm not your clickbait. I'm not your monetization. I'm not your ad revenue. I'm sorry this is all a very bleak ending, too. But, uh, guys, I... Uh, I'm even almost at, like, a total loss of words. I mean it when I say my brain is, like, mush after all of this. I tried to... I tried to hold out. I was hoping that if I kept just doing things, that maybe something would change eventually, but by keeping a connection to all of this... I was just going to infinitely get reminded of this and have people try to pull me back in or think that there's still an ongoing thing. If you guys are wondering about how tight I am with everything right now, I'm not. If you're wondering if I talk to like a lot of internet personalities, I don't. I seriously talk to only a handful of people at this point. I always kind of have, but really now, I barely talk to anybody. I've been trying to only keep with like a close circle of friends that I can really trust at this point. Because trust is hard for me now. I've gotten so used to people approaching me just because they're hoping to eventually like tell me to give them dirt on someone or because they're hoping I'm going to put them in contact with somebody. It's going to be, like I said, a long road to recover from this psychologically. This stuff really did a lot of damage. But I do hope you guys will at least understand and allow for that. I do want to thank everybody again that did support us over the years, even when this stuff did seem weird. Even when it did seem really bizarre 
Why are they so emotional? Why are they trying to get away so badly? Even if it was confusing, I do want to thank anyone who did stand by, especially those of you who were listening here since the start. You guys allowed us to survive, and we want to make it up to you guys, and not just the way I normally do here, that I'm just refunding donations on stream or something. I want to put more out there, I want to do more, and I want to try the hardest I can here with Bippy. It's why I was fine to be taking multiple jobs and everything. It's why I've been trying really hard here to figure something out. I want to get you guys this game, and I want to do the best that I can with it. And I know Julian is the same, that he wants to do the best with it. Even though it's been a hellish process, even trying to get our lives back through this entire ordeal, at least the positive thing I could say is we've got a lot going towards that. We have a lot ready towards that this year. And even though it's been a constant struggle to have enough savings to just hire the artists we need for Bippy, hell, even being able to afford, like, our one artist consistently, I feel like this year is heading in a much better direction. I think we've got a lot figured out. And I really hope maybe we can get everything going the way that we've needed to this entire time. I'm sorry again to everybody if this was all disappointing to have found out. I'm sorry too if this is like gonna change people's perceptions or like hurt things a bit. But like I said, it's also not a new discussion. We have talked about these things for years. I think it was also a thing that people didn't want to necessarily hear out, obviously. People want to throw, you know, suspicion and skepticism in, which, fair enough, I mean, a lot of online creators seem to want to bury things. Maybe that's why this audience is so skeptical, I guess, but with how chaotic all of this was and how much we're trying to get away, like I said, I hope it actually makes a lot more sense. This wasn't being done because we are being erratic and weird, it was being done because we legitimately needed to make ourselves safe. With a lot of the other stories that were on the other stream, though, I probably don't need to get into necessarily all of them. I talked about some of, like, the LA end here today on this stream, but some stuff I brought up was even just related to, like, growing up, life itself, and even, like, the situation that just came up with my mom. I had something kind of embedded into me since I was younger due to trauma that I had growing up that basically I started guilting myself for just anything. If anything ever happened, I would blame myself for it because I kind of got raised in a way that I had to just feel like everything was my fault. And that continued onward for a long time and even with a lot of this. That's why sometimes I'm still saying sorry in occasions where I probably shouldn't be saying sorry, but I just do it, like, instinctively. I remember I even had a friend a few years back that I kept acting what I perceived as being awkward to him. He kept telling me I was fine, I thought I was being awkward, and I kept saying sorry over and over until eventually he told me, you gotta stop saying sorry so much because you're making it almost feel like I had done something here. And I can understand that. That's fair enough. Could probably even be irritating for the audience on occasion, but that's why I was doing it so frequently. It is a thing that has just been built into me for a long time. That's why the conversation I had with my mom was pretty major. It was a big turning point. I ended up finally realizing this is the source of a lot of that. And this needs to be something finally turned around and changed. And this is another situation that I had to kind of get some control over. I know, obviously, coming off of this stream, no, do you think it's going to die down? It won't. People are going to try to make this into a thing still. Once again, there's just kind of a rule when you're online. If someone sees something that's perceived as vulnerability, weakness, you see that somebody is sad or they're down, a lot of people are just going to swarm, swarm over and start kicking them while they're down because they just will. I know what that was kind of like when I was younger, because I remember being around a lot of people who did that kind of thing. That's why I made my distance pretty quickly, but when people were doing that kind of thing, I was noticing it because it's, yeah, you're miserable. You're miserable and you're focusing on other people because you need to do that to distract yourself from how you don't know what you're doing with yourself. 
you have all these solutions for somebody's you know somebody else's life and how much they're apparently fucking themselves over but you have absolutely no answers for your own end and what you're going to be doing with yourself that's why you take it out on someone else like that i know just, that just inevitably of course people are going to latch onto this especially that's another one if you say don't do this people are just going to do it i know all of that obviously that's why I'm still saying this anyways, that it's like, I recognize all this, don't worry, I'm not a stranger to any of it. It's not like I'm unfamiliar with any of it. But it's kind of similar to what I said earlier is, okay, I recognize bad behavior, I'm still going to call it bad behavior. Just because I recognize it doesn't mean I'm going to excuse it. It's still bad behavior. But that's why I would hope by the end of this, at least, maybe you guys have more of an understanding. This is a lot more concise. I mean, how long has it been? I don't even think we've hit an hour yet, right? I think I cut this down pretty hard. I think I made this pretty short. So, if this is going to be recontextualized or chopped down or whatever, well, good luck. Uh, but this is going to be here for you guys if you want to watch it. If you need to be informed, you need a better understanding. Leave people alone on this. Aaron, I had mentioned in the previous stream, no, I don't like him. I don't like a lot around like his behavior, but at the same time, as much as people want him to be the big target, Aaron was pretty disconnected from a lot of this. Some of these decisions were coming from other ends and not really his own. And Aaron did help us in some cases too. Well, yes, there was a lot of harm being done while we were at that Game Grumps office. The reason that we weren't sleeping on a hardwood floor is because Aaron gave us the couch. It's not much, but I know they're already throwing it out, but still, that's something. And like I said, with the case of Matt, I know Matt, in his own way, was still trying to be friends, even if it's kind of coming through how probably a lot of performers or entertainers would be doing that. That's why I'm not really used to. I... I know he was trying to help and, like, try to do a bit better after making such a royal mistake. I think he's also hoping that we were never going to say what had happened, that hopefully it could be a thing he could get away from. But it's why I don't want you guys bugging him either. I don't want any of you guys going and bringing us up to any of these guys. Don't treat it like we were a major part of this, because in a lot of cases we really weren't. The reason we were a lingering factor for some of these people in some cases too was just to make sure we weren't going to say what happened to us. I don't want you guys going after people for something that happened years ago that we had spoken about numerous times only because a recent like kick up of attention made people want to do that. And once again, like I said, if people were seeking out justice, you missed your opportunity for it. The damage has all been done. That's why the only thing that could really make things better is to finally let things move on, move forward. And that even goes for the people who made mistakes back at the time. Some of the mistakes I don't think are excusable, but that mostly relates to people who I wasn't naming before. The people who I had named sort of did the least of all of it, and that's what I had mentioned during the previous stream I, I had done. Leave them alone. Game Grumps is not even like a factor in our lives anymore. The only thing that still makes it a factor is audience coming in and trying to pester us about it, or try to like have us spiral back into that so they can get some ammunition again. I'm not here to be your clickbait, I'm not here to be your weapon, I'm not here to be your monetization, I'm not here to be any of that. I'm here because I want to make some video games for people, and I'm going to leave it at that. Sorry again for all the chaos, everybody. I'm sorry these streams couldn't have been more mellow either. I'm sorry, just... In general, it just seems like the biggest mistake was even getting near this to begin with. I've even had some talks with people uh, who are friends with some of the friends that I do have that they've shared some similar experiences where they're like, oh yeah, no, I don't have to be near these guys at all. I don't have to speak to anyone. I don't have to be near my friends that are involved in like animation industry or my friends involved in YouTube or my friends involved on Twitch. I don't have to be near any of these guys, but if something happens regarding them, sometimes I will just have like a teenager come over and try to demand for me to say something about them. As if, like, I'm attached to the hip. We are, like, connected to each other. Each other. We are like a hive mind or something. I've had uh, quite a few people actually share stories about that. And that's even disconnected from some of this. That's why I said people I know in industry have been faced with that a decent amount. It's a thing people will do. They build an association. But that's why I keep saying, too, 
maybe it's time to sever that association because yeah i don't really talk to any of these people and haven't for years anyways and i was trying to make distance and get away because i got hurt and i don't want to get hurt again i know it frustrated people it confused people and i apologize for the confusion i apologize if it was frustrating and i apologize too if it was like becoming increasingly like upsetting to my end as well but you know when you have people seriously banking on you to hurt yourself and they're kind of pushing for it it's kind of hard to keep a clear head sometimes to stay calm uh I always did, like I said, I, I always did want to be hopeful. I was hoping by just sticking to my guns and just doing the stuff that I was going to do, people would eventually realize who I was and what I was trying to do. But at least it could be understood now, I hope. I hope. Hope is all I have at this point. <laughs> and it hasn't been taking me very far. It's pretty new to me, I guess. Before I was just hopeless. But I don't know. I'll, I'll try. I'll try to hope as hard as I can hope here. Uh, man. Julian and I at least have been, you know, doing all right here. We've been getting some work done. Once again, any of you guys who have been giving respect to what we had requested here, thank you so much. Seriously, thank you. I guess this is gonna kind of be it. Um, I I guess I'm gonna be getting back to work here. Um, this is gonna be sort of it. This is the last stream. This is the last thing to be said. This is the thing to kind of close it all out. Thank you all. Thank you everybody who did help through all of this. Thank you to everybody who did actually care. I feel the worst for you guys, too, because you didn't deserve to get yanked around with this garbage. You didn't deserve to have your time wasted with this, either. All the people coming by in the stream, just deliberately trying to, like, stir up drama and try to get ammunition on people they hated. Just because people couldn't leave this stuff alone. I'm sorry you guys had to be subjected to that. Or in some cases, even get roped into it. I'm sorry to any of my friends I had over the years if you had people go out of their way to go pester you and bug you trying to get information about this stuff too. People that hungry for information about, like, YouTubers they don't like, but they're doing that. I'm sorry if I got anybody hurt around me by just being there because of these things. I... Hope you guys at least will still enjoy what we do in the future. I am really looking forward to Bippy if we can finally just get that going. I'm scared, obviously. I said this at the end of the other stream too. I'm scared. And I'm not even scared because of like how people are gonna handle this or whatever. No, if anything each time here I've been streaming, I, I kind of bring up the stuff people are going to do, and then they do it. But what I'm more scared about is just, I'm scared if I ever will be given that opportunity. If this ever will really happen. I don't want to keep living in fear like this. In some cases, I've even actually recommended friends to stop talking to me, only because I don't want to get them hurt. I don't want them to necessarily be around me, and then someone goes after them. I've had it happen too many times. I'm really hoping that maybe I can start feeling like I'm part of the human race again. I can start being just a person. Maybe I can start seeing the positives in life. Things that are enjoyable, things that are fun, things that can be pleasant. I've at least had one pleasant thing there this entire time, and that was Julian. Julian has helped me through so much of this, and it's why I want to try extra hard for him too. I want to do the best that I can. I'm sorry about all this, guys. I'm sorry this is how this is all, how it all played out and how it all went. But just know that on my end, moving forward here, if I am being given that opportunity to do so, 
you guys have probably heard me sad, depressed, all of this throughout the years. I will finally be able to get into a position of happiness, I think. I think I will finally be able to, to be happy. Thank you all for everything. Thank you to the people who did support us over the years. To those who are trying to make problems and insist on problems, well, I know you're going to do it. I'll call it out here. And if anyone wants to help out, you guys at least know. No, that stuff's not being done in our interest. But you guys who are doing that, I also hope you can learn on your own end not to get lost to this. I hope you don't go down this kind of path yourselves because you're not going to have a fun ending point when you're just miserable and you're surrounded by misery and your life is just kind of that. I hope there can be some, some realization through this too and maybe things don't have to go that way. I want to start prioritizing positivity. I'm going to be doing it obviously for my own life here, but like I said, I'm going to try the hardest I can on the things I'm going to be making too. I want to make Bippy the best game that I can for you guys. Uh, once again, if anybody wants refunds for donations you ever gave on stream in the past, just send me a whisper. Give me the email address you used, the name you used, like message you typed, or if you don't remember that, whatever, I can probably just call reference from those two things, and I can get you a refund. I refunded everybody on the previous stream. If anyone went through a donation in on this one, I'm going to be refunding it. I, I'm not going to be reading these. I, I want you guys to hold on to that anyways. The point of all this, too, was not supposed to be, like, sympathy, like, baiting people into spending money. It's why I'm even kind of debating this. Yes, a lot of people came onto the Patreon after this, but I kind of want to give all of those back or, like, maybe remove every new person that came to Patreon from the past few weeks just so they don't have to get charged and they can hold on to that. I don't want you guys coming over here because of these things or because you feel like you need to feel sympathetic or pity or something. That was never the point of any of this. Talking about all this stuff was to at least let people know what we had had to deal with, why we acted the way that we did, and why I'm making the decision to stop with this stuff, prioritize work, and get away from all of this. I wish it could have been the more positive thing here. I am really sorry, guys. A lot of other people are still going to be around making stuff, though. You guys are always free to check out all of that. You guys are still invested in these communities. Those communities didn't go anywhere, and they're all still making content and everything. And if this changed your view of anything, it's why I'll still offer it again. Keep in mind that the names that I named, those people made mistakes around the beginning, and as time went on, either they learned, they grew, or at least things just kind of fizzled and moved on. You can leave them alone. If there was ever going to be justice, you guys wist, you missed your window for it. Just don't worry about it, seriously, because this is what happened last time. Everybody started targeting all the wrong people and just trying to go down a road with a narrative that didn't make any sense because it was supposed to be targeting people. It wasn't about forming an understanding. It was about figuring out the best way of trying to make this look more intense than it was. Leave people alone here. Don't bug people. If you guys are going to try to do detective work, I promise you, you're not going to go in the right direction at all. Yes, a lot happened. Yes, even more happened than stuff that I discussed during that 15-hour stream than here. If I was ever going to go over with someone just how much we went through, it would take probably, like, days. So much happened. But that's why, once again, let's let this all move forward. Let's finally actually try to do some improvement here. Let's get things to where they've needed to get to. I know the internet really prioritizes uh, destruction, but construction is what I'm hoping to prioritize. That's why I'm not going to really be online anymore. I want to start making things. I don't want to stall out. I don't want to just give up. I don't want to just take my own life or something. I want to do something with my life, and I want to do something with myself. And I want to get back to those passions that I had, so I can feel some happiness again. I really wish there was more I could do for you guys, too. It's why I was always refunding donations. I wish there really was more I could do 
for a lot of you guys who did help us out. Because I do feel the guilt, like I said earlier. I still feel guilty. I still feel like I should be doing more. Julian will still be doing streams on occasion, I think. I don't think he's going anywhere, at least. You guys can still check him out. I think we're at about... Mm, a little over an hour now. So this is probably a good time to wrap up. Oh, I, I will still be doing things, guys. I still will be making things. And even if I'm not around to say it online, I'm letting you all know that if I really am able to get the space that I've needed this whole time, I am going to be doing a lot better. I will be a lot happier. I can tell I will be. It's going to be a long road to recover, but that's how recovery will at least be possible. Everyone who's been supportive, you guys really rock. Seriously, thank you again for everything. And I said it on Twitter, but I'll say it here. Try to prioritize making something neat this year. I know there's a lot of emphasis on endless conflict online, but maybe 2023 we could do something better with this year, potentially. Did you ever want to start a webcomic? Maybe start looking into that. Did you ever want to maybe just get into animating? Maybe start getting into that a bit. Try to do some stuff. If, did you want to get into making games? Look up maybe a game jam or something as a starting point. Try to make some kind of piece of art this year. Try to do something creative. It could be anything. But try to make something creative and put it out there. I guess that would be the one request I would want to really make of people outside of please let us have our distance. I'd want to see everybody here try to create something. We've been so actively trying to destroy everything that I would feel happy to know if at least some people made a bit of effort to try to put some stuff back out there again. The internet used to be a lot more exciting to me when I was younger, just because it was everyone experimenting and trying new stuff and putting ideas out there. It doesn't need to be this way. A lot of this didn't have to go this uh, this direction, didn't have to be this way. And if more people could actually seek out happiness, it might encourage others to do so. You know, people always say that thing of, it's the internet, what'd you expect? Imagine if that went the other way, that rather than that being a negative phrase, that's more of a positive one of, yeah, everybody's always making stuff and sharing stuff. It's the internet. Obviously, that's idealism. We're never going to hit that point. There's always going to be bad eggs. You can't expect that. But that's why I would at least want to present the idea of that, because if one person at least feels motivated, that one motivated person might motivate someone else, and it could keep spreading through there. If more people at least try to do the right thing, or try to do something nice, or try to put something out there, it might not reach anyone, but there's always the potential it could at least reach one more person to also do that, and then it could keep spreading from there. If you guys want to find cool indie games, I'm not going to be sharing them anymore on my account, because I'm not going to be using it anymore, but look up Sage Sonic Amateur Game Expo. Uh, they do it every year. Uh, fun event, lots of cool stuff that people make, and what I would recommend is click between the profiles of people there who do submissions and look at like games that they share from other creators. You could probably go down a huge rabbit hole of indie games and development through that and find all sorts of cool stuff. There's a lot of cool stuff out there, but it requires some effort for hunting for it right now. Algorithms have been burying it a bit. That's why if the internet seems mostly negative, it could be because it's trying to prioritize that a bit around you. But you could try to combat it a bit if you dig a little bit deeper and try to seek out some positivity. A lot of people just get lost in the negativity, but it's good to seek out the positivity. And on my own end, that's what I'm going to be trying to do this year. I'm going to see if I can maybe start seeking out some positivity for myself. If anyone's trying to start out with coding, I would recommend pulling up a wiki. 
Uh, look for community forums as well, because a lot of different languages, softwares, and everything, they have communities. You can ask questions there, try to get assistance. But I would say wikis are one of the ultimate utilities to have, because if you're ever needing to look up a function that you have to use, you can start typing a bit of it. Maybe you need to use a function around changing something's color. So you search the wiki for color, and then you can find functions related to color. And you'll probably find some that you didn't even know about. So now you have future reference of those if you ever need to call back to that. Uh, if you need to get into drawing, Julian probably has some advice during his streams when it comes to animation too. But there are lots of resources and places to start on that. And obviously like Animation Survival Kit is one that everybody will bring up as a thing i know recently thanks to like younger mentalities i guess online we've had some people shutting that one down to say oh but there's the page about not listening to music okay then don't pay attention to that page you don't have to one for one take all of it in but there's fundamentals and a lot of like different discussion in there i would say it's worth reading some of it if you want to get into that but there's all sorts of different places for this too even just study the work you enjoy there's a game you really like and you want to make something like it? Look into the speedruns. People will break it apart like mechanically and talk about why the game works the way it does. Maybe go into slow motion and see how things are operating frame by frame. You might realize like the exact acceleration rate of a character and that's why they feel so good to control, things like that. Try to figure out the things about the stuff you enjoy. And you might end up then understanding better why you enjoy them. Maybe it's something about the aesthetics, or maybe it's like something in a game, for example, that it was a little mechanic you never even noticed before until you really broke it all apart. Try to prioritize a lot of the things that make you happy and excited. It's something I've needed to do for myself on occasion, that I have to remember there are things that can be fun, there are things that can be exciting, and whenever someone develops a passion, there's probably something that inspired you or got that started. Sometimes it might be good to even revisit that. Maybe there's a movie you really like that you haven't seen in a long time. Or a game you really enjoy you haven't played in a long time. Go check it out again. It might actually boost your mood and get you motivated. But I'll leave it at that, I guess. There's recommendations for people if anyone wants to hop into doing stuff creatively. On my own end here, I'm going to be getting back to work. I'll be getting uh, getting back to Bippy stuff here. I'm going to be trying the hardest I can this year, and like I said, I want to do the best I can here for you guys too. I really want to go all out with this. Thank you everybody who kind of put up with us over the years. And I'm not saying that to be like self-hating or anything, I'm not trying to beat myself up. I'm saying that because I also know for a lot of people, you guys were probably hoping for other things of us, or for us to be people that we weren't, or for us to even be connected in different ways to this than we actually were. People hoping this was a, a little deeper, but that's why at least I hope there's more of an understanding of who we are, and what our priorities are, and where we want to be, and what we kind of need here. Thank you again to everyone who's been supportive. I'm gonna go, um, I think I'm gonna go be with Julian for now. I'm really happy to have had someone like Julian here through, through all of this, and I'm also gonna try really hard for him. I'm gonna try the best that I can for everybody this year. Thank you all. I hope that, like I said, we really can move forward here. I hope that we can get that distance that we've needed, and I hope on my own end I can really start getting past a lot of this and prioritizing the things I've needed to do. It's going to be rough. Like I said, psychologically getting past a lot of this, it's going to be a long road. But if I really can get that distance, I think I'll be able to do it. I think I can start pushing through this and working through this and getting back to where I need to be at. And with Julian here, I know he's going to be supportive the whole way through too. 
I'm really thankful for having Julian here. Even when nobody else would listen, Julian was there. Anyways, thank you all again. I hope you guys can make your 2023 a good one. I think everybody deserves a chance at happiness. I don't think it it needs to be a thing that's denied as heavily as it is. I know a lot of people feel like they shouldn't be there for themselves. Or that they're the kind of person that should be denied of happiness because they just don't deserve it. But if you're granting respect to others and you're not harming others, there isn't some kind of reason why you shouldn't be allowed to have your own goals in life and be able to pursue your own sense of happiness. If you're ever down, just try to revisit the things that made you passionate. You all take care. You, you guys have a good one. And like I said, I'm going to try the hardest I can here this year. Bye, everybody.